The parking tools in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking aren't just for creating parking stripes. They can also be used to assist us in our parking lot layout. To demonstrate this, we will use the tools to develop a small parking lot design. We begin with an outline of a small commercial project. This includes the overall shape of our parking area, a pair of buildings surrounded by sidewalk, and two entrance locations. Now as a design requirement, the size of our proposed buildings necessitates a minimum of 180 parking stalls. Let's see if we can accomplish that. We will begin by selecting a parking standards file which will assist us by maintaining things like stall width, length, minimum aisle width, and bay sizes, and more. AVT ships with a number of these default standards, as well as lets you create your own. In our example, we will select a standards definition that matches the requirements for our project area. We will then pick points to define the east edge of our lot. When finished, a simple click tells AVT we only need the stalls on the inside. It's important to note that our stalls remain dynamic and can be controlled by intelligent grips, like in this case where we drag stalls over to follow the curve. Next we will concentrate on establishing the stalls around the buildings themselves. We'll do this by creating a new intelligent parking row along the fronts of our buildings. For now, we won't worry about blocking the driving lane between the buildings because we'll come back and address that in a minute. Next, we can leverage our newly created parking row to develop parallel rows. We will begin with the parking stalls along the north edge of the lot. Notice as we drag into place a new row, AVT will limit how close it can be to the original stalls to maintain the minimum drive aisle distance defined in our parking standards file. From there, we will continue to create parallel rows to define the parking stalls along the back edge of the buildings, as well as the final row behind the buildings themselves. Notice again as AVT monitors our layout to maintain drive aisle widths. With our overall layout roughed out, we can now easily go back and make some refinements. For example, in the northeast corner, we have an unnecessary gap. We can address this by using intelligent grips to extend these stalls to the corner and then join them to the other row. When the join is complete, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking automatically adjusts all of the affected stalls such that they continue to comply with our assigned parking standards. Our next step will be to address both the entrance into the parking lot as well as the drive lane between the buildings. We will do this by extending the entrance center line between the building and then using this newly created center line to define a parking access road. The default width for a parking access road is 18 feet, but for our design we'll use something a little wider, say 26 feet. When complete, AVT automatically updates our existing stalls as required. We will wrap things up at the front of the project by performing a similar operation to clean up the stalls at the other entrance. Next, we will fix the stalls behind the larger building where we have stalls defined on both the inside and outside of our parking area. Essentially, we only need the stalls on one side, so we can quickly correct this by telling Autodesk Vehicle Tracking that we only require the stalls as defined on the right. After clicking OK, the problem is resolved. Our final adjustment will be to the southeast corner of our lot, where our drive aisle is currently too narrow. We'll accomplish this by first displaying the bay construction lines so we can see how wide the aisle should be as defined by our parking standards file. Once displayed, we can leverage the parking row's intelligent grips to modify it such that it no longer encroaches on the driving aisle. Once complete, Let's back up and take a quick look at our project and see if there are any other areas we would like to address. For now, things look pretty good, so I'll turn the construction lines back off to clean up our presentation. Now, thinking back to when we started, the requirement for our project was 180 parking stalls. To see how we did, we can run a quick parking report. It looks as though we currently stand at 189 stalls, but we're not done yet. We still have to add some handicap spaces near the buildings, which will update this number. We will accomplish this by assigning a disabled property to individual parking bays, and the parking row will update automatically. Once assigned, we can copy these properties to other bays until we have all of the handicap spaces we require. When finished, or at any time really, we can refer back to our parking report to see where we stand. As a result of our changes, we can now see our current count, as well as what percentage of our layout is represented by either type of stall. 
Now, when all the refinements are complete and we're satisfied with the results, we can export them into a number of different formats so they can be easily incorporated into a master project report. And speaking of a report, that report would likely require an exhibit showing the locations and number of parking stalls. To help populate such an exhibit, we can easily add parking bay counts by selecting a parking row and checking the box to display bay numbers. After clicking OK and performing a quick regen, we can see the results. There are 17 stalls in this row, 20 in this row, behind the building we have another 20 and 20, and as we move around we can see the entire project has been annotated. Finally, let's spend a minute testing our parking lot design. We'll do this by performing a vehicle swept path analysis. We will begin by selecting our design vehicle in this case a standard passenger car, and then we'll place it on our lot. Notice as we move it around, it's intelligent in that it automatically aligns itself to our newly created parking stalls. Once placed, we will evaluate a standard maneuver where we pull our car out of the stall, drive parallel to the building, exit via the easternmost exit, and turn right out onto the main road. Throughout the process, we see a green outline which represents an envelope defined by our vehicle's body and a red outline which represents an envelope defined by our car's chassis. A quick review of the analysis results confirms a passenger car can successfully perform this maneuver. As you can see, using the parking tools within Autodesk Vehicle Tracking, it only takes minutes to conceptualize and then test a parking lot design.